So I'm going to be showing you a technique that makes testing your React Apollo code a lot simpler because we're going to add automatic mocking to the GraphQL requests. Now this is something I learned about in this article right here by Sashko where he outlined how they did it at Stripe. And so I implemented this and it has made testing my React code when having to deal with Apollo a lot simpler. So I really like it. So we're going to take a look at what this looks like and I want to start with a component, a very simple one that you may want to test and kind of outline where uh, you want to be able to test the different states. So what I mean by that is when we load our query, for example, here we're loading some to-dos, we could possibly be loading indefinitely or loading and then hit an error or load and receive data. And so we have some different states here. So we want to be able to display the loading state and we have maybe a component that renders. And in the error state, we have another component that possibly renders. And then we also have, when we actually finally get the data, maybe something else that gets rendered. So we want to be able to test these three different states or the different states that could happen easily. So I'm going to kind of show you the final product of this, so what this looks like, um, or what it could look like. And here's the following uh, test, what it could look like. So here is a React testing library setup. So you'll notice there's actually not a lot of code right now. There's not really a test going. It's just kind of showing you what the component looks like. So here I just named my test and then we are calling the render function. This is from React Testing Library. And what this does is just going to basically render these components and then we can do different stuff on the components. Um, like for example, debug, print what it looks like. And you'll notice I'm wrapping my to-do component, which is what I want to test in this thing called an Apollo Loading Provider. So we're gonna see what this does. And I called this debug statement at the bottom. So now I'm gonna run my test. And we're gonna see the result of it. And we'll see this is, it's basically just in a loading state. It's actually just gonna stay in a loading state. And so what this Apollo loading provider does is it just infinitely passes the loading in basically. And so what that allows you to do is you can test your loading state. So we can do this with the other states as well. So we can now pass in an Apollo air provider where we can actually pass in the GraphQL errors also that you may be getting. I'm gonna pass in an empty array, but it doesn't really matter. You can do whatever you like. Now you're gonna notice it's gonna say loading by default. So a little trick you can do is say await promise.resolve. Um, and then after this, uh, you'll notice that the, the code will be loaded. So we'll have two debug statements. So this is before it loaded and this is after it loaded. So you can see we tried loading the Apollo request um, and then it aired out. And again, we could actually specify exact GraphQL errors that we want to throw um, and be passed to the component to test those out if we want to. And then the last one is actually when we get data. So that's the Apollo mock provider. So this is a cool one because by default, what it will do is it will just mock out the data for you. So for example here, uh, we have loading and then it is displaying the body here and we can see we have two divs called hello. We can even see we got a little key error from React so we could go in and fix that if we wanted to. Um, and the cool thing about this is we can also go in and we can specify the data if we wanted to. So this was just fake data that was given to us that was automatically mocked. But if we wanted to pass in custom resolvers, we could. So I'm gonna say query and you return functions from this. And then I called mine to do's and then I can specify the data that's gonna be returned. So I'm gonna say ID one, type hello from custom mock, mocked data. Um, and then we can see what we get here. We can see it's loading, and then it says hello from custom mock data. So there we go. That is kind of the end goal that makes testing the Apollo code a lot easier, is these three kind of components that you can use to test the different states. So now I'm kind of going to go over how, how these were actually created or what it looks like to set these up. So these were components that I actually kind of just set up in my own code based on the article. So I went ahead and just threw them up in an NPM package. Um, and so I call this NPM package Apollo Mocked Provider and I export three functions out of there. Uh, create Apollo Error, Mocked, and Loading Providers. So you can create each provider. And you'll notice you basically just pass in the Apollo cache that you want to use in case you want to use a custom one, which in my case I was. And then you also have to pass in the type defs for the mock provider so it knows how to mock the schema. Um, so if we look at that, this is what the type defs look like. So it's just a string uh, of your schema. And I actually, I just created a little 
a utility called fetch type defs, which basically just goes and calls the server, which in my case is on code sandbox and saves the type defs to a file. Um, and so I just run a command like node source utils download type defs. I just run this command um, and it's gonna run this node code here, run this utility, which goes and loads it. Um, but anyway, so basically what this does is these functions return components and then these are the components that we can go and use them um, over here. So I kind of wanted to show you the code for this in case you wanted to write your own components that are similar to this or you can just use this library if you like. Uh, so starting off with the create Apollo Air provider, uh, we can see what it looks like. So we take an Apollo cache and then we are returning a component. And this component takes GraphQL errors. So these are the ones that you want to uh, return or be return to the component and then uh, the children. Okay, so in here we are creating an Apollo link and we create an Apollo client with the link that we create here in the cache and then that's basically the gist of every single one. And then we are wrapping the children with Apollo provider with our custom client. So the custom link is the special part really makes the mocking work. So in this case you'll see we just have a custom link that is going to return an error. So every single time. So we can see uh, and we have this little comment here that talks about it, returns the same thing for every request. It can either do the specified error that we have here or it can just return a random unspecified error. Uh, you get to choose. Uh, the next one, the loading one, we again just create a special link that basically loads forever. Um, and same thing here, we're taking Apollo cache as a parameter and return a component. And then we create an Apollo uh, client and pass that. And then the mock provider is a little bit special. So it uh, you can also uh, pass in, or you also need to pass in the type definitions. And the reason why we do that is because we're using a special link here. It's called a schema link. And we actually pass in a schema and that's how the data is loaded. Um, you'll notice how we're creating the schema here as we pass in the type defs and then we're adding uh, mocked functions to the schema. So this is something from GraphQL tools, something Apollo created. Um, basically it mocks out our schema automatically for us. So basically what we're passing here is a mocked out schema and when it makes a request it gets the data from that mocked schema. So that's how that works. But you can also pass in these custom resolvers which goes straight to the mocks function here and that is what uh, you can pass in custom data if you need to return custom data from something. So basically this is the setup that I had and then the last part is the fetch type defs. This is something that is just a little utility. There may be even a better way to do this, um, but uh, it just takes a URI and a t uh, whether you want to do a TypeScript file or not um, and creates HTTP link. Uh, I write where you want the path of it to go. Um, and then we just write a file where basically what we're printing is we create this introspect schema um, Basically what this does is it makes a request to the server, introspects the schema, and then prints that schema. Um, and then I replaced something in it. I can't remember why I was doing this replace, but I was doing this to get it to work. And then I just export type defs there. Anyway, that is the NPM package. And this is just how I was doing. These are just some functions and uh, components that I got. Basically, I built from the article and uh, I've used as utility functions to test the code. Now again, this is really just how you can get into different states with Apollo. Uh, in the next video, what I wanna go over is, it, now that we have these functions, how can we actually write some tests for this? So how can we use React Testing Library? We're gonna dive in a little bit more to that, how we can write tests for, say, a component or a form and whatnot.